storytelling. I am an Opok freelancer. I joined Opok last year June. And right now I've made $23,000 in earnings. In my first one year, I've made this money purely from romance writing. I just want to share exactly how I did it. So I want to make this video for two reasons. Number one, the first video I uploaded was a video talking about I made $10,000 in nine months. And now I'm here with $23,000. I feel like if I didn't explain it to people might confuse, get confused and assume I'm lying. The second reason is that over the past few months on Upwork, I've actually made a lot of advice based on ignorance. And just now, after my first year, I can actually look back and look at every single thing I did that made me this money for the past one year. So let's go. So the first thing I did... I created a niche for myself. I know that I say this all the time, but it is very, very important. If I had been in any other niche, I would not have made this money. When I first started freelancing, the people around me told me that basically freelancing was another version of copywriting. So when I got into a book, I called myself a copywriter. I had not done anything related to copywriting. I would written some articles in the past, but that was it. I called myself a copywriter. I applied for like 14 jobs. I did not get a single one. It was then I now saw a job post on romance writing. And this was important to me because I've been writing fiction all my life. I had written a lot of books on fiction. And more than that, in 2020, I realized my skills were not even good enough. I took writing courses. I went on YouTube. I learned anyway. I would eat up random people that were accomplished writers and just tell them to look through my work. I was that desperate. So in 2021, it was so easy for me. So what happened after that was I applied for my 15th job. That was a romance writing job. It was not necessarily a romance writing. It was more of a script writing games job. So actually, after a while, I actually got the job. But that job was very, very stressful. And when I got the job, I was thinking, oh, I've gotten a job now. I do not need to get other jobs. But then the job frustrated me so badly. I had to, I, I had to quit. And I came back on, that was around April. I actually opened my account in April, but I didn't start earning until June. So I came back to OM to Upwork on, in June. I wrote romance samples, which was easy because I already had the skill. I wrote romance samples. I sent 15 more job proposals. And finally, someone answered. And he became my client. And he's still my client even till now. So that brings me to the second thing I did. I always targeted long-term jobs, even before I knew anything about Upwork. I just already knew that I did not want to keep looking for jobs over and over. And I'm very lucky as a romance writer because in romance writing, in this niche, if you are a good romance writer, most clients, not all, but most clients, we always want to want to use you again. So they will just hold running contracts. They will just, oh, are you, are you done with that? Do you want another one? Is It works that, that way. That's why even when I got to $5,000, I had like three jobs on my profile and in South Korea because I just I just loved long-term clients. No stress, no looking for jobs. It just worked perfectly for me. And now I knew how clients were long-term clients. When I apply for a job, I would look at the review section. I really even searched for, oh, this client is a great client. It did this, it did that. I really looked at the time frame. Did you work with this person for over a year? one year plus because i was in school and it was very important to me that i could at least maintain a, a job at least this was this were my thoughts at that time i could maintain this job for one year and so later maybe when i left school i'm still in school by the way but when i left school that semester i was looking for fresher jobs but this was my entire mindset just look at the reviews see i mean how long they work with their freelancers see how why they cancel the contract at the end of the day and i did that so many times Actually, this also brings me to another point. Other freelancers always talk about reviews. I've not really been able to relate to reviews because I, even right now, I think I have only four reviews on my profile. I just I just did not care as much about reviews as I cared about long-term long clients. If a client is long-term, they will not cancel the contract. They will just keep giving you milestones. So that worked out for me because even if I didn't have a lot of reviews, at least I actually had... A job I was doing every time I never had to worry about gigs 
So personally, I did not focus on reviews that much. So this brings me to my third thing. I always targeted low-paying jobs. At first, it was all low-paying jobs. I, when I first got back to Uprock in June, the first thing I did was to find out the minimum wage for romance writers on Uprock. And that's about one cent per word. So I applied for one cent per word jobs. I kept applying for them. I would not apply for the things that I did not apply for jobs higher than one cent per word, but I didn't apply for jobs lower than one cent per word. One cent per word is good for me because I'm in Nigeria and one cent at that point translated to five naira. So it was actually a good deal. But if I were to go lower, it would have it would have taken a lot. Because there are a lot of clients that, that actually went lower. I saw a lot of jobs, even till today. I've seen a job for five dollars for ten thousand words before. And a lot of desperate people still apply. So I would advise you to go for low paying jobs. But not a job so low paying that you just you're not working for anything but the review. I, I would not advise that because apart from the fact that you get dissatisfied and leave up work sooner because you get frustrated, the other thing is that it will take you a long time to scale. If I start at one cent per word job, it will be easier to apply for two cents per word jobs after that. But someone that started with half a cent will first have to get to one cent and then above. So it, it is not something I would advise. I feel like when I see people getting, um, when I see their their pay per hour is about two point seven five per hour, I just I just feel bad because employees like this will use you and frustrate you. Most um, minimum wage pay they're not nice clients, so they are experts at frustrating you. So that that's another reason I would not advise that, but more on that later anyway. So now that brings me to my next point. I started to scale. Now, let me see a little, a, a little story. When I got at my first job, at first I was happy with it. One cent per word, I wrote about 50,000 words. So at the end of at the end of every story, I would get I would get about five hundred dollars. If I removed a book phrase, it would come to about four hundred dollars. So at first I was happy with this job. The clients kept telling me, I like your work. If you do it well, I'll always give you more. And is honestly, it was a very great client. Very, very great client. I couldn't have wished for a better first client. But so in my head, I was still in school. We were still in session. So I said, if I were to write two stories a month for this man, I would come up with about $1,000. And so if, and I did it, I actually did it. I struggled with school. It was very, very difficult balancing with the medical costs, but I somehow managed to do it. But then I, I thought, I'm in session and I'm making about $1,000 a month by writing two stories for this man. What if I were to, what if when I graduated, I opted, what if I write like five stories a month, 10 stories a month? That means I would actually be making close to $4,000 every month. In fact, I'm living the dream. I do not need to go anywhere. But that was how I was thinking as basically, when I say as a novice on, in freelancing, after a month, just July, I got frustrated. I realized then that I was getting unhappied. I had to come up with creative plots. I had to write. It had to be interesting from, from start to finish. And I was just getting paid $400. So I told myself I had to eat the job market. But this time, when I eat the job market, I did not look for one cent per word jobs. I started looking for 1.2 cent per word jobs. So in my head, what I told myself was that I have already scaled the one cent per word line. I should never go back there again. So I started applying for 1.2 cents per hour jobs or anything higher than 1 cent, 1.2, 1.5, 2.0. It took me 30 more interviews to land the second job. So this is why I always tell people when they are struggling about, oh my God, I've tried, tried, tried. I, I just tell them it's normal. It's actually normal. Even right now, with $20,000, I still struggle to get, get some jobs. So... I got, after the interviews, I got a job that was actually 1.2 cents per word, or 1.3 cents actually. So I started to write, and it was actually very difficult combining both jobs. I don't know how I did it because around that time we also had exams. But I think the exams finished in around September. So it eased off me a little. It's me a little. But again, this was under lockdown clients. So it was the combination of these two clients. 
I made me get my first $5,000 $5,000 in October after four months of starting. So at first I was happy, I got $5,000. It has only been four months. I'm making it, but then I started to get frustrated again. I just started wondering, what else is out there? I have to be getting on that page. So I went back to the job market. I just started looking for more jobs. And interestingly, this time I submitted about 15 interview and 15 proposals. Notice that I was no longer applying for one cent or 1.2 cents. I was going 1.5 or higher. I must have submitted about 15 proposals. Nothing happened. Then I got frustrated. I started thinking, what am I doing wrong? And this was the first time it occurred to me to probably go online and check and check what other people were doing. So, I'd heard of all these Upwork freelance coaches in the past. In fact, I've, I've told some of my friends to, to do some of their courses because, again, I was kind of ignorant. So, I started looking for one of them to teach me. Some of, most of these freelance coaches, they are a lot in Nigeria and they charge around $100. So, I could afford it then. I was like, oh, maybe they can teach me something. But then I realized something. Most of these freelance coaches actually have students because they post their students in a lot. Students that were that end only about one thousand dollars or even lower, so I realized that there was nothing these people could teach me. I could not be paying someone to teach me how to earn one thousand dollars when I earned five thousand dollars. So, in fact, this is one reason I do not agree with freelance coaches because I believe you can earn your money by yourself with the help of free YouTube help. So, if you want to do another video on that, I will do it. But let's get back to the story. So I said that I would I was not going to look for people who had earned only one thousand dollars. I started looking for people who had earned hundred thousand and above, and that's when I fell into this whole George Bonstek, Morgan Overholt. I read blogs, I read YouTube channels, I watched YouTube videos, and then I realized that I've been doing everything all wrong. In fact, the only reason why I had clients were because my samples were good, my proposal was a mess. My profile was in shambles. In fact, my editing was still creative writer instead of professional romance writer. So it was no wonder I really got job in rights. So it was honestly a mess. I had to go back. This was around November now. Because I think I ignored all of this because we were writing another set of exams. So when I, I think we were writing another set of exams in November. But I think it was also during that time I refurbished my profile. Then immediately after exams, during Christmas, December, I started sending more proposals because I'd looked through everything, the proposals, the profile, everything. Everything was looking very good. I started sending job proposals. Actually, I then got one interview. I got one interview then. This woman came. She said she wanted to pay me 1.2 cents. And I told her that no. I started sending, I sent about 15 more job proposals. I did not get anything. I started to get frustrated that whole December because I had managed to move my my earnings from 5k to 7k by December from September to December it was this 7k and I told myself that this December I have two jobs if I work hard enough I can actually make three three thousand dollars and move my profile from 7k to 10k which is a major milestone but at that point I was frustrated I just kept wondering what is wrong I think this is when I started to even ask is it because I'm a Nigerian I did not know what was wrong I applied, I applied, I applied. But this was when just when I was about to get frustrated and give up. I got a job interview. This guy wanted to pay me 2.5 cents per word for a job. And I don't know how he found me because I've been applying for even job of 1.5 cents and I've not been getting answer answers. But somehow he found me and I thought he was a scammer, but he was serious. We started the contract in January and he helped me. He propelled me in January. I already had two former clients. I had this guy and then the former story. One other interview came in. This woman said she wanted to pay me 1.2 cents. And at that time, I was actually very frustrated. So I told her that I'm not doing anything for 1.5 cents. I already had a lot of clients on my head. And I was so expecting her to say, oh, no, bye bye. And she said she agreed with me. And I was surprised. That's when I realized that the more clients you have, the more you can easily bargain with people. Because then you become scared, you, you know that you can't lose. So at that time I had four clients, I was managing, managing, managing. Well, beginning of February, I got 10K in earnings. 
and I was very, very happy. It was then I also realized something, the difference between low paying clients and high paying clients. This man that gave me 2.5 cents per hour, this was roughly 26 Naira in Naira. This man was, what I expected from clients at that point, because I work with low paying clients, you finish a job, they are ready to give you another one. They, they, in fact, they run the clock. They are not relaxed. They can give you a deadline of eight days for 20,000 words or even lower sometimes. It's always ash grinding. When I got this high paying client, this guy would ask me a question. Very sometimes the questions don't even relate to the to the to the to, 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 to the job. Or he would ask me to write something, I would write it. He would start asking the question. Instead of him to just, you know, look through the document and leave his comments. He would leave one comment and then he would ghost me for three days. And I was just this ghosting continued throughout December. And I was just so frustrated. I, I did not like this. At that point, I was like, why is he doing this? Why can't he just be serious with the job? But then I realized that I paying clients to do this. They are more relaxed because they prefer to give, to collect high quality um, content than a lot of content. So actually, I did not have job security there. He was also very flexible with deadlines. I asked him, oh, what deadlines do you want? He said, anyone, it doesn't matter. And I was just like, why? It was so frustrating to me. But after a while, right now, I'm actually grateful for clients like that, clients that would not stress you, clients that will actually pay you well. But they were very, very, very free. But at that point, it was coming with a huge downfall because by February, my contract was closing. I was almost done with his job. It did not take time. It would have taken less time. It was, a, it was actually a low-paying client, but it was very flexible with me. My contract was ending. And he had not made plans to renew. Again, I was just a client that would renew immediately. This one was not like that. So I did not know what to do. In my head, in that February, immediately I got to think, I told myself, because over the past six months, I'd been earning only $1,000 per month. So I told myself, what if I can put myself to $2,000 per month? And that is when I made what is probably the biggest mistake of my career till date. So the next thing I did was to outsource. So now th this is what this is how I look through things in my head. I told myself that if I get the high paying client, I can pull in ten thousand dollars from him, and then I could get even more clients that were high paying, and then I would distribute them. I would earn a lot of money, and then I would make at least two thousand dollars at least. But then I just I, I, first of all, I underestimated a lot of things. I did not realize that it would take me so long to get under high paying client. Because I was already at 10K. I had a top rated plus badge. I thought everything was going to be fine. It was not. I, I kept burning through connect. I was just going, applying for jobs, applying for jobs, applying for jobs. At this point, my rate was 1.5 cents or above. I was not going lower than that. That was when I now realized that none of them wanted to hire me. I was so confused. Right now, I think. I know why I was not getting hired. It was because of my sample. In the past, again, I had mostly written for low paying clients. And low paying clients like, at least in my experience, romance stories. They like all these fresher, sweeter romance stories. But high paying clients, their style is mostly the same. Just punchy sentences. Just They just wanted to, a lot of drama, a lot of twists and turns. And I didn't have any sample related to that at that point. So I think that might be. One of the reasons why I didn't get called back, but again, I didn't know then. So then, that was when I realized something. It was after I applied for about a billion jobs of 1.5 cents or higher, that I realized something that even now I still could not get 1.5 cents per jobs. But I now thought, what if I had to go back to apply for one cent per word job? And this is something, this was one of my biggest mistakes because I reversed the clock, I started going for one cent per word jobs again. And obviously, there was no one cent per hour job I did, that I applied for, I didn't get. It was very easy. In fact, I had to go back to some of these people at the day and sent me an interview in the past, and I just told them that, I'm sorry, your project is too low. I went back to them. I was like, do you have the job now? Someone they said, oh, well, I can't pay you one cent, less than one, more than one, point, one cent. And I was like, it's fine, bring it on. And then I think I was already starting to get used to higher paying clients, people that paid 1.5 cents, 2.5 cents. As I said, they were chill. They were okay. 
if you made a mistake, they will tell you, oh, please, can you correct it? They were very polite. I went back to dealing with one cent per word client. Mm. It was horrible. First of all, I, I this new client, I told myself I was never going to handle them. I was going to give myself to a team, them to a team of writers. I looked for writers. I quickly realized that a lot of writers were not good writers. A lot of writers did not know how to write. And most of all, a lot of writers did not appreciate being told how to write. I've I've not had a lot of good experiences with outsourcing and I would not even advise it. In fact, if you want to outsource, I will always say one thing. Only outsource jobs that you can lose. Only outsource. And this was actually helpful because those one cent per word jobs, I could afford to lose them. So I gave them out in February. I just gave them out to people. But every time I look through their work, I just realized that you are writing nonsense. This is not what you are supposed to write. So what used to happen is that I would have to go back and rewrite it. Remember, I was still holding my own jobs at the time. So it was very frustrating. It was very, very frustrating. I was tired. I would, the funny thing is that someone would write those stories. I would rewrite them. I would give them to the client. This client that is paying one cent per word job would tell me, oh, this is terribly written. This is not what I wanted you to write. And again, most of these one cent per word jobs, I realized that their clients were hyper focused. They were this kind of clients that. They didn't just want you to write a story. They wanted you to write their story as if you were in their head. So if I didn't write this thing this way, they would be like, oh no, this is not what I was expecting. Even if it fits their outline, it did not matter. They wanted you to get into their head. I was so relieved in February when I closed all of these contracts. I was tired. I was frustrated. At that point, I didn't even have any other IP client because I had to finish my contract with the 2.5 cent per hour job too. But I only had those, my two former clients and the woman that was paying 1.5 cents per word, but again, it was just so relieved because it was such a horrible experience. And so I would really not advise outsourcing for people. It was a it was it was a very terrible experience. So when I went on to March, so it was in March, I now started I I, I now told myself again, I'm going back. Again, I had February by this time because of all the outsourcing experience. It was terrible it was a terrible month but i actually managed to pull in three thousand dollars and part of that money i made part of that money my employees made part of that money i did not even know how to share it because anytime you wrote some, you wrote something i had to rewrite it anyway i managed to come out with about two thousand dollars in earnings and that much but i told myself i will not stress myself i do not care how much i'm in i just wanted to have mental mental sanity So it's much I was still nervous because I still did not know what this client, what they wanted me to do. I honestly did not know. But I just knew that I did not want one cent per word jobs. So I, I think I kept applying for jobs. But again, nothing. So that was when the 1.5 cent clients, again, people that pay eye on Upwork and romance writing, they are less they are less forthcoming about telling you, oh, we want another job with you. They might come, they might not. But this 1.5 cent client, she came back and she said, oh, she wants a new job. She wants to do me. She wants to give me a new job. And I told her to increase it to 1.8 cents. And she didn't reply my message. And I thought, oh, that's good. But then, like, a few hours later, she updated the contract. And it was actually 1.8 cents. So that kept me sane so much. I'm not sure. I think it was April when I hit the job market. But this time... At, by March, I'd already gone to about $16,000 because at this point, I was mostly earning about $30,000 per month. I used the same framework. I had about five clients. I handled as much as I could. Those I could not. I gave them out to trusted writers that I could trust that these people can actually do. So I was still pulling in around three k per month around this time. So April, I hit the job market because I now wanted a new high-paying job. I was first applying for two cents per word jobs, but then I could not get them, so I went to 1.5 cents per word jobs. And this time I actually got, I think I actually got someone, and I actually got someone, and I, but funny enough, okay, I realized that it was actually underpaying me too, because it was, it was paying 1.5 cents, which was decent to me, but his complaints were very, very similar to one cents per word people. 
especially when you what i when i realized the volume of what he wanted me to do and so that was when that was, i think that was the first time in my life around april that i started to push back on a client that a client would tell me oh i didn't like the way you want to do this and i would tell them this is how you, this is how you asked me to do you can't tell me this because a lot of clients especially low paying clients do this thing where they just they just ride you they're like you need my job by that point i already had like five steady clients most months and so even if you were my one of my higher paying clients i was not i could tell you i'm sorry you did a terrible job i cannot do this with you if he was too strict with deadlines sometimes this guy would be very strict with deadlines with me oh i want this amount of work work delivered with this within this week but then after i delivered the work it would ghost me for one week goes me for 10 days and i would be like what so i have to keep pushing back on that and that's been very 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 nice just and i knew that i would probably leave that client as soon as possible because i did not i did not want stressful clients so my business model has probably been the same thing from march to now i just have clients i take on as many as i can because by the way there's a strike in nigeria there's a federal government strike not a federal government strike a university strike so there has been a lot of time since march so i take on the jobs i can handle those i can't i give them out and then so i i managed to pull in around three thousand every month since till may that was when i got twenty thousand dollars and so the moment i got twenty thousand dollars around that time that's when i realized that things were getting easier for me like two times around me one was an invitation where the woman specified that she wanted only writers from the united states but she interviewed me and i got the job the second one the exact same thing so i think that it has been getting kind of easier kind of easier especially you know for clients that say oh they want only united states clients i think i stand a better chance now with the twenty thousand dollar accounts so that has been very easy but i still want to change my framework i'm still going to work on it because for me, my goal now is to stop looking for, is to go away from 1.5 cents per word clients, 1 cent per word, even 2 cents. I'm trying to get higher, 3 cents, 4 cents, 5 cents. I don't want to get to a place where, because in the past, I was thinking that I would have to write 400,000 words to earn $4,000. I want to make it easier. I want to, because there are writers, that, there are clients that will pay you the same four thousand dollars for writing only a fifty thousand word book so i want to get those clients that, that's basically my long-term goal with upwork now so anyway that is everything i did to earn twenty thousand dollars on upwork i think i have covered everything if i did not cover anything it was probably a mistake but this is the step by step so thank you for watching i'll see you next time